Hi everybody, this is Deb from D&D Art Gallery. Hope you're all doing well today. Today I have a 12 by 12 inch canvas. I'm going to be doing a dirty uh, cup uh, ring pour. Here's my base coat, which is the Blick White. And to that I added about one tablespoon of the Deco Art Satin Enamel. I wanna try and get a cloudy effect. My first paint is the Master's Touch Crimson. My second paint is the Amsterdam Naples Yellow Red. The third paint I'm using is Golden Fluid Acrylics Iridescent Copper Fine. The fourth one is Amsterdam Grayish Blue. And my last paint is the Blix Mars Black. Pouring medium today for all my paints was seven parts of the mix to one part paint. And I did not add any water to any of my paints today. I left them a little bit on the thicker side. Today I'm going to be using a split cup. And I did purchase that from Mixed Media Girl, Marcy at Mixed Media Girl. It is this the two chamber uh, uh, split cup. And here I am just uh, starting to um, fill my cup up, starting with that white. I want to try and get that cloudy effect through the whole painting. So you will see that I layer that white um, every so often on each side. I'm not layering these in any particular order. Just trying to give it a good combination here. And there's that copper. And that is that uh, Naples yellow red. And there's that Master's Touch Crimson. And you're going to see by the end of this uh, video that the crimson really is the, uh, the dominant color in this painting. Um, and I do already have down um, my base coat around the edges in the corners. Just to make sure that they are covered. And like I normally do, my um, painting is prepared underneath with masking tape and push pins in the corners. I, fi I find that if I use those push pins, it's a lot easier to hang on to the canvas when I'm doing all the tilting. And as I'm layering here, I'm just trying to be mindful of putting colors next to each other that uh, that will go well together and not cause a, a muddy effect. And if during this video you find you have any questions or you'd like to leave any comments, please do so. I'm always open to answering questions and help you in any way I can. And if there's a certain pour that you'd like to see me do, also leave that in the comments. Especially if you are a beginner pourer, I would um, definitely try and do a pour that um, you'd like to see done. This ring pour is a, is a fun pour to do. Um, it takes a little bit of practice. Especially at the very end when you're getting, um, when your cup is almost empty and you're down to the really small ring. It's hard to get that to look perfect, but you'll see what I do to help that out after I do the pour.
The paint I'm using is in uh, today is in lowly Veffy bottles, and those are very very nice bottles. No silicone is used today. I'm not looking for cells. More the cloudy effect. Thus, I used that um, DecoArt satin enamel. Getting to the end here. My cup is almost full. I will have plenty of paint for this 12 by 12 inch canvas. And here I'm just showing you that cup now that it's full. Here I am laying down my base coat. This little tool that I'm using is called an OXO turning spatula and you can purchase that online and I found this really is a nice little tool to spread your paint out real smooth. This paint also has the uh, DecoArt satin enamel in it. And at this point I realize I don't think I have quite enough paint on my canvas, so I'm just adding it from my big bottle there. Checking the edges here, making sure that they're all covered. Okay, just doing a quick torch to get any air bubbles out. And as you can see, I do call this a dirty pour, ring pour, because I, at the beginning I just pour the paint out like a dirty pour. And now I start the rings. I'm very happy with the colors that do come out. And as I was saying before, when you get to the very end and your cup is almost empty, sometimes it's hard to get that perfect ring at the end. So what I do is I just take my skewer and I fix that ring a little bit. And you can see some of the cloudy effect coming up now with the white. And as I'm looking at this and getting ready to tip it, I do notice that I have quite a bit of white paint in the center, unfortunately. I wish I would have had more of the, um, of that red and the copper. 
and the yellow red in the center instead of all that white but at this point I'm just I'm just gonna go with it and and tip and see what happens here you can take your time with tipping and I am excited to see what the mix is going to uh, how it's going to react to the uh, satin enamel with the mix uh, you can get quite a transparency of layers in your painting quite a bit of depth and that's really what I do like about the mix I will link in the description uh, where you can purchase the mix and at this point seeing that I have all that white in the center I decided I'm going to wreck it a little bit with my skewer and see if I can drag some of that the colored paint into the center And now I'm going to just do some more tipping here and see what happens. You see the way that I'm cupping my hand? I'm trying to preserve that colored paint and then just um, bring it back down onto the canvas after I tip. Here I'm trying to run off some of that white paint and again I'm cupping my hand I'm just trying to preserve some of that colored paint some of the red that I can push back onto the canvas Here I'm just taking a look at it, realizing I have way too much white and I need to get some color in the center there. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to fill another little cup up. I'm gonna use my split cup. Just put some colors in it. And I, I apologize that you can't see me fill that cup because it is off it is off camera there. But I am basically using the same colors again. Not filling it all the way up. It wasn't even half full, I don't think. Here I'm just going to do another little ring pour. And I did leave the white out this time, I believe. Looks like I did put a little bit of white in there, but not to the degree that I did the first time around. Okay, now I'm going to do some tipping and see what this adds to this painting here. And I do think that, that the white that I have on the edges there is such a nice contrast. I decided to try and leave some of that on there in my corners
and you can see how thick that paint is because it does uh, run pretty slow there. And this is where you can see the magic of the mix. All the different layers that you're starting to be able to see. I don't get that effect with Floetrol or uh, Liquitex uh, pouring medium. I only get that with the mix. And here I think I'm just trying to run off the dark part and leave a little bit of that white. Yep, that's what I do there. And I'm really liking the looks of this painting now. I think those colors are just so pretty. I do how like, like how that black just outlines those the red color and the um the bluish gray. The one color that I really did not see a lot come through was that copper. And I just wonder, it, it must have just got buried quite a bit. But I do continue to tip here. Because I found with the mix, the more I um, stretch out the colors with the mix, the better effect I get. And there is a lot of that, that cloudy effect here. I'm very pleased with that. My paint is starting to run slower. And you can just see how pretty that looks now down at the bottom there of that canvas. You can see me running my fingers along the bottom there too. Now I'm fixing the edges and the corners, making sure they're all covered. Just pulling some more paint down here. And I just decided to just stretch that out a little bit more there. Pretty happy with what I see. And I'm really liking the composition of this. I'm giving it a quick torch. And I will be getting you down for a close-up here shortly. Okay, I decide just to give that a little bit more of a stretch there, just to pull out some more layers. I really think that the mix is like magic.
and you'll get to see all the really neat effects when I bring you down for the close-up. Okay, just cleaning the bottom off there. Just pulling it out a little bit more here. Being mindful of not losing any of the nice effects that I have or running any paint off that I think looks really nice. Giving it another torch here. I don't think very many air bubbles came up at all on this painting. And here we are for our close-up. Here I'm showing you the whole painting. And this is the upper left-hand corner. Just going down the left-hand side. Very interesting area here. You can see what I mean about that black, how it just outlined some of those um, other lines like that. And this is the lower left-hand corner. And then you have your muted areas like the cloudy effect. You do some of, see that some of that bluish gray there, or grayish blue. Some of the white coming through. There is very little copper there coming through, I just noticed. This is a nice area in here also. And over to the bottom right hand corner, just going up the right hand side now. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for spending time with me today. This is the area I love the most, right here. All the different layers you can see coming through. And that's the upper right-hand corner. Make sure you share this video if you like it. And until next time, take care, everybody. Bye for now.